Now, and and uh, the but but the main journey started probably in 2004 uh, at Bhabha Center Center. We were building a mobile platform. Mobile platform. Uh, I won't say AGV. It was a a, 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 a small mo mobile platform uh, uh, for nuclear application. And I was designing and implementing whatever the kind of sensors it had. Probably, uh, sensor suit was similar to to what was there into the into the um, uh, uh, today's today's driverless car. And then uh, at Infosys, this is the right hand side. You see my boss here as a part of this team contributing to the development of the first demonstration of driverless system or self driving autonomous system in India by Infosys. And uh, when, when Vishal Sikha was the CEO. So this is what was my master's project, computer vision, uh, intelligent uh, welding system. So uh, 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 let me just play this video of Infosys. Company's Bengaluru headquarters, he took a ride on a driverless vehicle built by Infosys engineers to brief the media about the IT major's first quarter earnings. Infosys campus does aim to be a place of innovation and there's something new today on the day of the quarterly results. Vishal Sikha, head of the company, is arriving in a golf cart. Nothing new, golf carts are actually quite common here in an Infosys campus. But this golf cart has something special about it. Or rather something which is not there which you would normally see. There is no driver in the cart. It is in fact an automatic automatically driven cart. There is no driver and Vishal Sikha coming in this cart without a driver. So he's heading actually for the quarterly results. So, so that is, uh, I don't know. What is it? Company's Bengaluru headquarters. Vishal Sikha, head of the new golf carts are actually quite common here. Golf cart has something or rather something which is not no driver, an automatic, automatically driven, okay. this company. So that is, a, uh, that, is that was a, uh, probably a more professionally uh, project work. So, uh, but as I said, I was working, uh, this, is, this is a picture of, picture of my work in uh, uh, um, Baba Atomic Research Center. Uh, as I said, it is not AGV. AGV is different than uh, than uh, today's self-driving car or autonomous vehicles. We can call probably UGV, unmanned ground vehicle, which uh, which is which has three 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 tire platform and which has all camera system, ultrasound system, radar system, and all to to uh, you know um, then then uh, then. That was that was in two thousand two. Then in two thousand sixteen, you have just seen the video where as a, doing some parts, not exactly a lot more on a computer vision side uh, part. And then then uh, just before coming here in two thousand nineteen, I was part of Vipro autonomous vehicle team, and I did a lot of work there. So this is the right hand side car. You can see the autonomous car of the Vipro. Uh, and uh, it was being worked with in collaboration with our ICE Bangalore. So played a role across uh, life cycle of autonomous vehicles. Uh, I, I, you can go uh, read some of the papers we have written on the Pro website. Uh, my LinkedIn uh, profile, there are articles written on these autonomous systems. So, uh, and uh, <coughs> so, <coughs> so some more, some more, uh, work, details of the work. Apart from, I was part of uh, developing a simulator for autonomous vehicle uh, to, to understand a lot of nitty-gritties of autonomous driving. Uh, simulators are very common. So there are open source simulators, there are commercial simulators, and we were building our own simulator called self-driving car in a box, self-driving vehicle in a box, SDV in a box. And uh, uh, we were, we were, <coughs> Uh, I was part of that team majorly, but along with that, I was doing a lot of other uh, works for 
like if you see here, uh, so in a simulator, I was uh, trying to work on lane and lane marking, vehicle detection. Then uh, one project we did, a couple of projects we did for, for customers, a driver monitoring solution using artificial intelligence, passenger monitoring solutions. And then uh, this was this was done for the autonomous vehicle because you know, imagine this is this is more for <clears throat> for safety and security of the passengers because imagine uh, you have seen there is no one else, just passengers in the car, right? There is no driver. And then safety security becomes important. Or it is important to understand what how passengers are reacting, what passengers are doing. How can we control that? So passenger monitoring solution was aimed at that. Then uh, for one of the Chinese customer, we, try, we were trying to work on fisheye camera based uh, system development for autonomous driving. So you, and then the another solution which I worked for emotion detection uh, and classification for a passenger sitting in the car. So a lot, lot of those kind of works I have done uh, in in uh, in, um, in uh, Wipro. This this is a part of Wipro. <clears throat> so coming back to coming back to the driverless car or self-driving car. What is working principle? So so far we have understood what where it started journey, why it is needed, how it is working today, and my own personal experience. But how? What is that working principle, right? Let's go into the some text, detail text. So that is a, uh, uh, as I said, uh, driverless car uses three-step process, <coughs> I, I, which is something similar to human drivers. That is a perception, planning, and control. So that is what you do, right? Just imagine what we do as a driver. If you are driving a car. Uh, you can just put into the driver's seat and just try to think what you do. What you do is we pursue the world we see while we are sitting in the driver's seat. We see how the driving is, uh, how the environment is outside. What is, uh, where are the nearest car? Am I on the right road? Am I on the right lane? Or am I driving at, you know? So these kind of perception I will have. Once I have the perception as of the surrounding, I plan. Now what I do is, okay, there is a car ahead of me. I should change the lane or I should apply the brake or that kind of planning I will do. And then I take a control action. Okay, I need to change the lane. Let's work on the steering, reduce the speed, work on the strain and then increase the speed to go ahead and things like that. So that kind of the exactly same principles, driving principles are embedded into the driverless car. So human, because we are trying to replace the human driver and that's what we are trying to do. So uh, <clears throat> human components are being replaced by uh, sensors, actuators, computers, and all that. So that is what we will be. Uh, so if you see, I have tried drawing uh, drawing a parallel line for these three steps. So in a perception, we are using. So what we do in a perception as a human driver, I use a lot of sensors, right? Mainly, I rely heavily on my vision sensor, rely on my ears, rely on probably touch sensors rely on maybe smell, right? Test is probably something which we don't use in driving in a true sense. And these sensors are being replaced by a vision sensor is replaced by a camera. Then for radar, LIDAR, for perceiving the world, 3D world. And then once you get that information through the sensors, now, in our case, through our own natural senses, we send that information to the brain and the brain processes that information. So in a driverless, the sensors send this information to the artificial intelligence and that artificial intelligence will process the information. And then after that, human takes a control instead in a driverless electronic control system, control unit will take a action. So that is how the driverless work uh, in a in a very layman fashion. It's a very complex process. That's what I said in the beginning. 
when DARPA competition happened, when Google started journey secretly, they thought this can be solved in next five to 10 years easily, but definitely it is not solved yet, okay? So <clears throat> you see the car looks unique today. Uh, you have seen that uh, uh, driverless car of Google. It has a lot of sensors now, GPS sensor, ultrasound sensor, speed odometry sensors, control systems, LiDAR on the top, you have seen that black, black object that is a LiDAR. Then video cameras, not just one camera, multiple cameras are there. Then it needs data connectivity, radar system. There is a compute system on the board, on the car, like engine instead of engine now, probably computational a heavy computer would be there. A battery system would be there and a lot of those things would be there. So different, <clears throat> typically for, if you see the car, how the car sees the world around it. So this is a, this is a car which is, which, which will try to cover this much range around it from maybe probably <clears throat> uh, 10 meter ahead, 10 meter behind, or uh, at least, or 200 meter, 200 meter ahead, 200 meter behind in a long range. and in a short range, probably five to 10 meters around the car. So that is done through various sensors like long range radar, ultrasound for sh short range. Then <clears throat> there are short range radar also, uh, uh, and then cameras uh, to, to cover some of these uh, uh, visualizing the surrounding. And then LiDAR, LiDAR is just to, uh, convert 3D understanding to un have the 3D understanding because none of these sensors do not give the 3D understanding like the way we can see the 3D gaze the 3D understanding that that is obtained by the uh, by the uh, lidar. So these kind of sensors are already there. This is the small list. There are many more sensors, but that's what we do. So autonomous car or self driving car will. We'll try to see all around. There is hardly any spot which is not being seen and uh, covered through the sensors. <clears throat> so just let's take uh, some examples of perception. How uh, that, what, what we do in the driving, typically driving, we try to see lane marking, right? We try to see traffic lights. We try to see road signs. We try to see signboards try to see other vehicles, bike, cyclist, pedestrian, animals, some obstacles like this, obstacles, traffic signs, tra traffic police, road signs, uh, uh, pedestrians um, crossing the road or animals on the road or bicycles. So let's see uh, how, how these examples, how these examples are, are <coughs> uh, being worked out. So let us just, these are some of the examples you can see. Uh, some examples I am showing now, uh, how the driverless car would work uh, using the perception system. So this is how the, for in, in the small, small corner here, you will see the actual uh, uh, driving situation. And on the right hand side, or this simulated environment will show you what exact how the car visualizes things around it, and then take a decision. When that car stands on the signal, it will check all all around the objects, and then you can see here the left hand small corner how the car is changing the lane, detecting the obstacles, changing the lanes, uh, detecting the objects on the road understanding the situation and then it will it will see the road sign is seen right there so you cannot drive it will change the path and it detects the school bus or something like that and then it it changes the its path so you can say someone suddenly comes it detects that reduces the speed right this cyclist you can see left hand side so, or if it, it, it a traffic sign 
uh, it will detect how it will detect the it is a go signal or no go signal and things like that so these kind of things have been already uh, implemented into this driverless car all the rules required to drive the car are embedded into the car and this uh, will will uh, these sensors whatever i said typically help them to to uh, see the world uh, around perceive the world around it and see the world around it and drive the car so you can see <clears throat> now at the corner you can see the car is waiting and trying to uh, trying to drive uh, at the junction now you see in the snow uh, kind of zone right it is it is trying to take a turn and when it is taking a turn it realizes some object is coming and it waits there right some some another vehicle was coming so like this uh, lot of those a uh, uh, lot of those a uh, lot of that kind of algorithm is there uh, into the into the so even even it can detect this a uh, smallest uh, sign boards this you know on the road see there is a small animal probably a human driver would also would have missed that but but this car couldn't miss that right driverless car couldn't miss that so that kind of uh, uh, technology exists for for uh, driverless car and that is why it is possible so now here you see in front some people are driving and it it is it is trying to detect that uh, you see someone is just coming into the road and trying to move in and out and so this kind of technology makes it work better uh, better to the so there are various sensors which can be used uh, and these sensors are selected based on various parameters like range of detection accuracy of detection resolution required uh, measurements and uh, uh, <clears throat> then uh, then uh, does it work in a dark light uh, weather conditions size cost lot of those factors are used so there is there is another article i wrote uh, on my linkedin where i mentioned what is this sensor how do we do the sensor comparison for different cars and all that so if we go into the details of the architecture system architecture of the car um, it is it is like this so this i this i took from i i i did my uh, i am a self driving car engineer nano degree i obtained self driving car engineer nano degree from uda city so this is from the uda city is that course so it has it has four blocks one is a, a the sensor block then perception planning and control and the information is captured from the sensors and a lot of that happened what you have seen just now right uh, based on uh, using that information of camera system using the information of lidar system using the information of radar lidar gps and others you do the lane detection you do the traffic detection you do the classification you do the traffic sign detection and classification you do the object detection you do the space detection you do the localization and you do then send that information to the planning system uh, to do the route planning prediction plan, behavior planning trajectory planning all that and then that control action will be taken and send it so that is what exactly happens in the computer of our ai system of the car artificial intelligence Uh, of the car so brain behind driverless car is artificial intelligence <clears throat> so anyway artificial intelligence is not new again it existed since 1950s uh, and john mccarthy is known as the father of the artificial intelligence so there are multiple terminologies you will come and ai ml dl so ai is artificial intelligence ml is machine learning and dl is deep learning a three terms often interchangeably used but they are not same okay maybe uh, on friday session i'll try to go into the deeper of this what is 
uh, how this intelligent system works, what is AI, what is machine learning, what is deep learning, how they are different. So, but in general, AI is a bigger umbrella. It means it's a program which has ability to learn and reason like a human. I mean, as a human, human intelligence, we say, and why we say someone is intelligent, somebody is not, because if it provides some reasoning, right, some logical reasoning. So if the artificial system or machine or some system can provide that kind of reasoning, then we can call artificial intelligence. Now, within this, there is a, a subset called a machine learning uh, within the artificial intelligence. So it is a machine learning is nothing but algorithms, which has the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. So once programmed, it will automatically keep learning, keep learning those algorithms. I need not to teach it again. So those kind of algorithms are known as machine learning. And deep learning is another rising. It is, it is a recent phenomena, probably somewhere 2010 onwards, a lot of things happening on this. But machine learning and artificial intelligence are the world. Probably 1950s AI, 1970s, 80s machine learning, and 2010 onwards the deep learning. So deep learning is the <coughs> uh, subset of machine learning in which uh, you you need not to train; it will automatically from the large data set it will learn what it has to learn. Okay, but for this, what you need for all these artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, what you need is a data. And that is why, uh, although it is 1950s, it started, but not much than 1980s or 90s, because there was no data. We never collected a lot of information. We never had a lot of information the way we had a today information. Probably, uh, I can just give one example where uh, I, I had my laptop, uh, I had my Y laptop. I had my uh, computer, first computer in ninety, sorry, two thousand, which was uh, which is which was not even as as computationally powerful as my mobile today. You can imagine, and still I feel like I don't have enough compute power in my mobile system, and that is the kind of because that is the kind of data we are collecting now. That is the data we are generating now. So data, as we are generating more data, we are creating more data. We started, uh, this machine learning, deep learning started becoming popular. Along with when you say data, then other subjects come into picture, mathematics, statics, or if that AI to be applied in automotive, then knowledge of automotive, then programming, all these skills are required. And uh, that is what is the, so here is one example, right? Here is one example where two artificial intelligence systems are coming together. Okay. So just let, let's see. Today I'm meeting Jack, a smart car. Someone like myself, that's really exciting. So Sophia, as you can see, Jack is driving us now. So how does it feel for you? So in this, in this uh, video, if you see, in this video, if you see, um, to be quite honest, uh, I think it's uh, there are two driverless car uh, and then lady, you, you see uh, the driver, near to driver, is not actual that. person, it is a robot, different for me. Sophia. Because I know how reliable smart systems are. After all, that's what I am myself. I think you should be used to the situation of people being hesitant to you at first. Yes, of course. I know that some people react skeptically. And the driver is just sitting in like the driver's me. seat. He's not actually driving. But for my part, I have complete confidence in Jack. Look at me. Do I seem nervous? No, you're looking completely relaxed. So this is this is what is uh, you know this is what is uh, today. happening today. And uh, without going into there, probably I'll talk more on artificial intelligence system on Friday ses uh, session. But uh, by some of the implementation in the in the uh, autonomous vehicle uh, lane detection, so I implemented this program uh, using uh, computer vision, Python, OpenCV for lane detection. <clears throat> so it can automatically detect the lane. 
uh, left hand side you can see right uh, lane marking has been done um, as you are driving uh, my my program can detect the lane and uh, on the right hand side on the right hand side if you see it can you can detect the uh, lane not on the left hand side if you see it's mainly more straight uh, lanes uh, right but uh, in actual the lanes may not be straight right they may be curved zones uh, and uh, uh, then also we also need to know it's just not knowing enough the lanes but what is the drive available reason is there any car or object on my that lane uh, so that is a the green patch you see is a drivable region and with the radius of curvature calculation so that i i can take a steering action accordingly so this was done uh, as part of my project and so then i also implemented another program called traffic sign detection using using deep learning artificial intelligence technique so <clears throat> it was a four step process uh, first uh, a rather three step process so first we you know, got the data of different signs like you can see the right hand side different sign board images we obtained and then we created a data set uh, and did some exploratory work. What are the kind of sign signals are there? Then design and develop the CI model uh, and uh, trained, validated, and tested the model. Uh, and then we sent a new image of a traffic sign to predict whether it is detecting correctly and fairly like 95 percent it was fairly doing correct and <clears throat> to do this we implemented a alienate model that is a cnn model convolutional neural network model to train that and predict the traffic sign Sir, so, this, so this was this was this was done by uh, uh Yan and uh, the same model we picked up that architecture we picked up and used for our data set and uh, then there is this another uh, using now earlier we did this <coughs> lane marking detection and tracking using computer vision image processing techniques using python and opencv now this work probably implements the uh, artificially deep learning CNN techniques. So let me just play, play this. So here, lane detection as well as object detection happening. That object detection is happening through the deep learning technique. <clears throat> On this, probably you will see the same thing, but now without that marking, right? Automatically, uh, without this lane marking and drivable region, the vehicle detection, right? So that kind of uh, that kind of <coughs> uh, technology uh, uh, will be there in the in the uh, driverless car. So uh, then there is a this this is a, a Sebastian Thrun uh, who was uh, who is father of I'll call father of winner of the DARPA challenge way back in two thousand five uh, the second DARPA challenge 
uh, his car he developed he was working at stanford then he he participated into that competition and he won the car uh, he he won that first competition and the second uh, first was held in a deserts uh, road but the second was held uh, in a city roads and the second competition he was runner up and then he was leading uh, the initiative at google uh, secretly he and his other participants in the and then they developed the google car today he runs his own um, academy udacity from where i did my self driving uh, self driving uh, car engineering certification nano degree certification so there is another <coughs> Uh, another you know, phenomena called uh, to train how do we train you know the uh, driverless car to learn uh, so there is something called behavioral cloning so this technique can be used to to uh, capture the best practices of a driving from the best human drivers and then implement that learning clone that learning into the uh, into the uh, machine Uh, artificial intelligence so that's let's hear him you're going to learn about behavioral cloning but more importantly you're going to play with simulation and you're going to drive a car through a simulator yourself and then you make a neural network copy you okay so you'd be superfluous uh, the neural network will watch you will watch your behavior and the task for the neural network is to pick up your driving skill and copy it and do the same there's two ways to fail one is your neural network fails and second is that you're just a lousy driver then find somebody else to drive for you but if you succeed you can take your brain your driving smarts and impose it, impute it into a neural network that is super cool so how that is done you probably got... i'll show you one example i'm training i'm training my car to drive in a simulator environment in a very very different environment i'm training my car this is the actual i did Uh, using simulator and i am trying to teach the car how to drive in a best manner in the left hand side and then right hand side you will see when when the car learns from here uh, my best practice uh, there now the same learning is cloned to drive in a, some unknown region on the right hand side if you see so here the same same thing is implemented now based on my left hand side learning the car is trying to drive in a unknown territory based on the my behavioral cloning which i did uh, in artificial intelligence so that is the that is the that is the um, that is the technology today uh, in that and then there are other two blocks which is a planning and control as i said so what we do is once we use that information through the uh, in fact i have not shown any examples of lidar data processing i just showed information processed by so 3d 3d and depth measurement is done using lidar uh, which i have not included and then there is a there are other sensors right radar ultrasound so route planning is done so what it will do is based on the lidar and radar information Uh, it will try to figure it out you have seen how it changes the lane how it identifies to stop and all that right so that kind of planning uh, will be done uh, whether to keep the lane or change the lane or whether to apply the brake that kind of all so then this kind of planning route planning prediction trajectory planning all will be done based on the information by doing this sensor fusion and then there will be a lot of control system pid control system mpc control system vehicle dynamics etc etc will be implemented so one example where all those three steps are done in a simulated environment i wrote a program to drive this car autonomously into the into using c c++ python uh, into the simulator so let's see if the car is able to drive and the left hand side you see right i am capturing lot of that information uh, for my understanding how many cars are there uh, behind me left to me right to me uh, what is my current speed 
and then there were the, that uh, this problem statement involved we should not have you know jerks we should not have acceleration limit uh, was put speed limit was put so that you know uh, and then i should drive you autonomously so that green mark you can see ahead is shows uh, the my route planning and it also show gives me information how far is the car ahead of me and also i detect uh, through the sensor information where are the other cars uh, left right uh, behind and all that uh, and based on all this information my program drives the car and this this uh, this is done uh, now through program not ma manually i am not driving into the simulator environment my program is driving this car into that simulator environment so that is how that is how the the technology will be developed that is how the technology will be developed and implemented into the into the uh, uh, driverless car so you can see it it tried to initially tried changing the lane but there was a car in front there was car left there was car right hand side and I could not do the lane changing, so I had to apply the brakes, reduce the speed, and then I will I will uh, change the lane uh, somewhere down the line. You will see I have I have probably I'll just fast forward it so you can see I will now uh, uh, somewhere I'll change the lane uh, and see I, I have changed the lane and come to the another lane because of that white car i was not able to drive you in the middle lane so i will overtake the car with by by but but i will have to maintain my speed so that kind of rules i will have to follow and i will have to drive you so this is the kind of technology being developed so in rest of time probably i'll so there are a lot of automotive trends now you know uh, but but the simulator which you have seen doesn't really take into account the vehicle dynamics, the mechanical engineering principles and a lot of those. So that uh, when I was working at Wipro, uh, I was also trying to uh, build a concept called co-simulation so that that autonomous simulation along with the vehicle dynamics, you see here the situation, right? What is happening? And then, then why it is important uh, dynamics part which is not really reflecting in those simulators right so that is the reason it was essential to to uh, take into that account and uh, so the uh, emerging trends in automotive are like autonomous driving connected car so one car need to talk to another electrification shared mobility you can see right why dynamics become important and that is why we were trying to take into account those those effects <clears throat> so uh, then there are various methods as you build the car driverless car right and uh, what kind of testing happen into that so there are different levels of testing across the life cycle uh, first first testing happens is software in loop so you develop the software Use the simulator environment, put that software into the actual cars, uh, get the data from the actual car and put that information to the, so whatever the software I have developed, let's say, uh, that will be actually done, uh, uh, actual testing of that software will be done on actual input. That's what is called a software in loop testing. So once you have thoroughly tested your software, then probably you go into the another, um, mode called hardware in loop so can i bring hardware into the so maybe one by one uh, sensor real time sensor real time control real time uh, vehicle right so finally it will be vehicle in loop so once i have tested all the hardware all the systems i have tested all the software then i will actually put the vehicle in the loop and uh, actually putting uh, the technology into the vehicle and asking vehicle to drive and test it that kind of testing will happen so different kind of test will happen and uh, technology will be developed so benefits <clears throat> definitely a lot of benefits are there to to you know drive the car and uh, 
one of the benefit is improved road safety definitely 90 we said in the beginning if you remember i said 94 percent car accidents are because of human driver so 94 we will remove so we'll have improved safety then less traffic because everyone i mean on another slide i said bad driver bad traffic is because of again human uh not following the rules so less traffic convenient parking which because of less traffic less cars on the road parking will be available and then environmental benefits because uh, driverless car more or more are electrically driven and so so it, there will be two ways environmental benefit less car electric right more free time so you just sit in the car relax don't worry uh, so driving is no more fun uh, so there is no driving is required right <laughs> so more free time available all the time these cars will be available all the time not like you you have seen in i don't know if you have gone to mumbai pune big cities or uh, many time in in uk also it doesn't it doesn't happen only in india it happens in uk so my house is in such a location whenever i request a taxi many drivers don't pick up the taxi call uh, take the call because they had to travel more distance to pick me and do the service for me uh, than the actual distance which i need i am using for the taxi so that kind of situations won't be there so many time in big cities or even small cities the taxi drivers who deny decline the taxi so which might not happen uh, in this case there is no driver attitude because there is no human driver right so intelligently driven so a lot of those benefits will come uh, and 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 the, this car can be used by uh, uh, disabled people easily uh, i mean that was the first i mean when google showcased the uh, the car uh, driverless car uh, self driving car it was actually the blind man was sitting in the car he was alone sitting in the car so you can imagine the kind of confidence the technology we can have so there are uh, there are six levels of autonomy um, uh, defined by society of automotive engineers while this technology was developed in in uh, along with google and other companies so it said there is a zero level that was no no autonomy at all i mean no uh, it is completely driven by the driver human driver then uh, there is a autonomy level 1 where driver assistance should be there and uh, that kind of driver assistance we talk some companies develop or we also have now the parking assistance or drive alert system or many other things right so that is a adas where lot of companies doing lot of things nowadays okay vehicle is controlled by driver but some driving assistant features will be there in the second level partial automation vehicle has been combined with automated functions so like for example take example of mumbai pune express highway and uh, acceleration or disacceleration or steering actions uh, can be functions can be activated while driver is still there uh, taking having the control of the car all the time but some of these functions can be activated it is up to the driver to decide to make use of that or not but the the car is completely under the control of the driver the level three that is where again a lot of companies have done i mean probably tesla's car is is there most of the functionalities uh, then there is a conditional automation where driver is necessary in the driving seat but it is not required to monitor the environment all the time the driver may give up the steering uh, give up the control to the car completely but 
he should be in a ready position to take control back any time when it is required. He just need to notice if this robot driverless car is, if notices something is going wrong, he should take that. So that is why driver need to be present in, and Tesla, Google, all these cars are in two and three a lot. I mean, probably many automotive cars are in level one and two. Some are in between two and three, but Google and Tesla are probably have already reached this level three. Now, high automation level four vehicle is capable of performing all driving functions under certain conditions. The driver may have the option to control the vehicle. So mostly the car is driven autonomously, but if driver can be still there, but driver can, if required, driver can take a control, but car will drive automat autonomously. And that level four probably has been achieved mainly, I would say, by Google's car now, level four and five. Uh, level five uh, under controlled environment, I will say, is achieved by Google. So in the race, Google is far ahead. In level five, uh, driver will be completely removed. That steering wheel also would not be there. Nothing would be there in the car. It will be just a simple box to sit in the car, performing all the, so that is where we are looking, aiming at every car company or every company is looking at level five auto, autonomy. And once we reach the level five autonomy, we will have those cars. If when we have that trusted and tested car, then we'll have that on the road. So where are we today? So we are probably, as I said, many car makers are somewhere zero one, uh, maybe two. Uh, probably some cars are like, as I said, Tesla, Google are somewhere in the three, four and uh, five probably in a controlled environment, Tesla, Google, Google is leading the path. So uh, as you see, uh, there is a huge opportunity by 2030, it is expected autonomous cars will become more popular, more and more popular. Uh, level two vehicles are estimated to be 92% by 2030. And level three will be around eight to 10%. By uh, 2030, uh, no level four, level five will be operational by 2030. And it is still not. Uh, as I said, it is just in a conditional environment. Uh, so Google doing some level four and five operations in US, some companies doing in China, Europe and so on, but not, we are far away, I would say. So who are the companies working in the driverless car, uh, driverless car uh, system? Uh, you can say today, uh, as, I, as I pointed out earlier, this innovation came from unexpected quarter, unexpected companies. Uh, it was expected, innovation was expected from the automakers, but it, it came from the tech makers, right? Google, Google was the leading and then Tesla and all that picked up. So the technology providers made it now almost every automaker is a part of it then there are a lot of service providers there is a lot of startup system in us europe china who is working a lot of work on this one like then there are the service providers robo taxis uh, uber lyft ride car sell all that are trying to provide the services but today more or less uh, auto Although late, probably 2010 or 15, uh, auto companies realize they are behind the tech. They should, initially they thought it is, Google is doing something which is not really uh, important. And that is why they did not notice it until 2009, 10, probably 2015 onwards, a lot of companies started realizing, no, this is a real, Technology need to give attention and they started working. 
So what are the challenges in development? That's what I said, right? It is it, we are we are far ahead uh, because uh, there are a lot of challenges. Okay, one is safe operation of a software system under all circumstances. We are not having that confidence. Just see the image here. Uh, last week only we had a storm. Uh, we had a snowfall, heavy snowfall in my city. Now we don't know whether the autonomous car or self-driving car will able to drive in such harsh weather conditions. And in those conditions or in any condition, whether what is the reliability of sensors? Where let's say in India too sunny or too rainy, right? Or night, whether the sensors will operate whether the camera will be able to capture the enough information. And a lot of those questions are still not answered. Then infrastructure, right? Many, many cities don't, I mean, at least that is true for India, where all the lane marking, road marking, traffic sign boards, rules, everything is not there, as well as connectivity. So let's say if you go on some that Lonawala Ghat, Kasara Ghat, right, then you will not uh, get that connectivity. Uh, then uh, cyber security. So imagine you are driving and someone hacks your car uh, in, a, in a remote place, right? And then another legal and regulatory aspects are still there, like, if you meet with the accident, if this car hits the, some other car, who is responsible? Is it is it owner of the car or is it software developer or is it a car maker or is it a technology maker? Who is, right? So there are a lot of these questions are there. Then, as I said, that is why we were developing privacy and safety of passengers. If someone has hired the car, who is responsible for that? What is that? All those questions are not there. So there is still a lot of things need to be resolved before it comes the publicly available technology. Uh, but yes, a lot of things, a lot of applications are being developed. Robotaxi, like Google, Uber, delivery vehicles like Neuro, Amazon are being, public transport like this are being developed and Yes, mobility is changing forever, I would say. Uh, maybe I'll, in the interest of time, probably I'll skip this slide. Maybe I'll talk some later. So uh, there are a lot of learning opportunities, self-driving cars, certification by Coursera, self-driving car, nano degree, self-driving car engineer, nano degree, Udacity, where I did obtain my degree. Then there are Udemy courses, MIT courses, there are many uh, edX courses. You can try to learn if you have interest into this and try to understand uh, the, the exciting take for the auto, uh, automotive industry. Uh, probably any one of you are interested to learn more, uh, understand this uh, AI, MLDL technology, want to do something in this technology, I can provide a remote internship uh, to the students, your students and all are those interested. So key takeaways, driverless car is multidisciplinary field, definitely is a one of the futuristic technology and it is the right time to learn driverless car technology and driverless car going to solve several problems of today's mobility, but facing several challenges to make it reality. That's what I talk. So future of mobility would be driverless cars, plus electric vehicles, plus mobility services. That would be the future of transport, future of mobility. So with that note, probably I'll take, say thank you. And I, I just wanted to keep five minutes to, to uh, for the questions. So I'll stop share and uh, if you have any questions we can probably take up you can speak out some of your questions or 
you can type your questions in chat box i hope it was clear uh, understandable to you uh, what i said we'll meet once again on wednesday once again on friday on a different topics but they are more or less interrelated thank you <coughs> uh, sir any questions participant participant can ask question if they have so no problem if there are no questions so we can probably uh, once again i say thank you everyone for listening me and sir, one, i think yeah sir yeah. there is one question in chat box sir yeah why we always lagging technology compared to other developed countries uh, that is a good question uh, because i always believe um, uh, we we don't think innovatively so probably as i said uh, when uh, they, 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 a, that's mixed problem it's a people as well as government as well as uh, cultural problem i would say uh, for example when darpa uh, one of the um, research agency government agency at us held this competition uh, maybe our government initiative did not do not happen that way that is one way other ways we 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 get a technology uh, probably much later uh, when it is already available in a uh, developed countries and because of uh, late availability of the technology our innovation become late so there are a lot of those so i would always say uh, so but it, it's changing right i mean i i see a lot of startups coming a lot of uh, people a uh, lot of people taking innovative challenges and another culture is uh, problem culture i say culture because in our country i mean our society we have a lot of social pressure of um, doing something i mean we have that trend set of working uh, getting good job working for a company you know uh, if you are doing some innovation and you are trying to do startup probably you will be called uh, probably a uh, uh, not a good enough guy kind of right probably when i left infosys i started my startup i mean a lot of people thought what i am what i am doing right <laughs> why i am leaving the good job and things like so it's it's that kind of cultural problem so i would say yeah multifold problem but slowly we hope it changes with the new generation thank you so any more questions if not probably thank you everyone uh, it was uh, sir, what about the uh, in night driving uh, yeah. whether uh, some special uh, features are provided for this uh, i mean lot of research is being done and probably we i myself wrote on uh, uh, article on wipro uh, wipro website that white paper is there where we mentioned maybe next time i'll provide that link uh, the uh, in a night how basically you heavily instead of on camera sensor you rely on a lidar sensor radar lidar and ultrasound not on a camera camera system may work only in a, a day time a lot or, but there are a lot of now cameras being Im implemented which works in the night system like maybe people are trying testing different type of cameras thermal camera that so on so i would say uh, but that is why we are using a multiple sensors so but uh, let's say for example uh, uh, heavy rain condition you might not able to see in the uh, that uh, traffic sign properly right or uh, that kind of situation would be there just not uh, night so what we are trying to uh, the technology is trying to do is try to bring other sensors which can if one sensor system fails other system sensor system will support it okay sir thank you yeah
any more questions if not thank you sir once again we'll meet uh, wednesday morning uh, uh, and uh, have another uh, technical session <laughs> thank you <laughs> okay okay fine thank you sir very much for sharing your valuable knowledge uh, time giving to us uh, we sure that all the participant will get benefited from it yeah. and this session was really effective because uh, you have uh, you are uh, you already explain not only in uh, terms of ppt but also in terms of videos also yeah, yeah. so thank, thank you. you once again thank sir. you thank you thank you, thank you. Bye. okay fine